Here's where we're at in the project at this point. I've gotten the hoses together. I'll just give you a quick tour of the guts here. So here's the lid and the feeding tube. The feeding tube goes all the way down to the bottom of this barrel. And the overflow is about halfway down. And the idea with the overflow is that's all open. And as we push new material in, Unfortunately, we don't know exactly how old that material is, but it will come out the overflow and into the compost bucket. So the lid goes in. We're going to screw that on. Let's talk about heat. This is going to need some heat. We need to maintain about 100 degrees, which may work fine in the summertime and not so well when it's colder. This submersible stock tank heater is a great option. The only issue is that I believe all of them, maybe not all of them, have uh, thermostatic controls inside of here. So if it's above 40, I think the heater turns off. I seem to recall that either I found one that offered a wider temperature range or that I cut this open and disconnected the thermostat and bypassed it altogether. But that means I need either an external temperature controller that monitors the temperature of the biogas and turns the heater on and off or I just need to figure out how long it needs to be on and, and run a mechanical timer that's good for 1500 watts I believe this is rated at maybe 1200 but this I used for heating biodiesel uh, a long time ago and I'm pretty sure that is shot at this point one thing to stay away from though are these battery heat mats or wraps and they work great for batteries, but uh, they don't work so well for heating up a large drum, even a, even a small pail. I've had a little luck with that, but half the heat goes out and half the heat goes in. And so you, then you're tempted to wrap the whole thing with insulation. And when you do that, it overheats and it, uh, and it fails. It just, it burns itself out. So heat is another issue we need to resolve. Here's an option. This won't work in this situation because the tanks are reversed, but I use this barrel as a heat exchanger for a solar batch heater that I had. It was a gravity feed and um, it would basically just circulate hot water from a solar collector that was down below the barrel and um, gravity feed. So I got a batch heater. I got uh, 55 gallons worth of solar heated water out of this. So one option is to add a copper heat exchange loop inside of here and do the same thing. Have a solar, uh, have a solar collector below and just let it gravity feed and warm things up. And again, you'll probably need some temperature control so you don't overheat the biogas slurry. So this right now is set up just for storage. We don't need these spigots at all. So the heater is going to go inside of this barrel all the way to the bottom. The cage around the heater element allows this to rest right on the bottom of the plastic barrel. And the power cord feeds up the feeder tube and comes out the top and gets slotted right there. Okay, power cord up the feeder tube, cap goes on. We've got our gas outlet. As we feed this, gas will bubble out going to bubble through this hose. When this becomes active, I'm going to put a little water in here so there's a little water trap, which is why that's so long. And that will act as flashback prevention. If for some reason flame back flashes into the storage tank um, and then wants to keep going into the digester, it'll get stopped by water in the trap. Um, this is the, the gas storage unit. Okay, one barrel is filled with water. This barrel, as it fills with gas, will rise up. So what happens is feedstock in, effluent out, gas out, safety water trap. Gas will bubble through that into this barrel, fill up the barrel. Gas comes out, goes through the gas valve, on and off, pretty simple. Now, 
Note that this is all plastic, plastic burns. None of this is approved for gas use. This should ideally all be copper. It should be plumbed and piped according to all your local and national codes. This is dangerous. This will burn. I'm going to put a flame on the end of this hose and it will melt. It might burn. Actually, I'm going to put a metal tube on there first, but this stuff will burn. Okay. Be careful. If you don't like it, don't do it. If you're not sure that you can manage this, don't do it. Have a fire extinguisher on hand and be ready to run if you need to. Okay. So don't do this. I highly advise you not to do this. I'm just showing you how this can possibly be done in a very simple way. If you're going to go any bigger than this, you need to be a lot more diligent about gas codes, fittings, and flammability. Okay, all we need now is some food for this thing. Stay tuned.